Hi everybody, it's Casey. I wanted to go over this piece with you really quick. Um, this is just getting started on it, day one of painting. It was a Facebook Marketplace piece. I uh, paid $150 for it. Normally I wouldn't pay something that much for um, a, like a small buffet dresser, but this is a unique piece. It had not been represented well. It had needed a lot of repairs. It had a trim missing around the outline that goes around the dresser drawers and then on the side there's ovals the oval circle that had trim around it and it was broken off and missing the top um, was lifting up and it need to be nailed and glued it like glued back down um, big cracks in the top that needed to be fixed and all kinds of repairs need to be made to it but other than that it was a sturdy little piece on it i am this is just my base coat going on it's been cleaned really well and this is a homemade chalk paint that i'm using um two different colors i just mixed some uh, valspar reserve paint and then i added some uh, mixed together some plaster of paris with some water and then i strained that through a strainer into my paint colors and it just gives it extra adhesion because i'm not using any primer i didn't even see in this piece because um, it doesn't have a very glossy finish so that extra adhesion will help and so this is a custom color but i wanted you to see just the before and after the repairs and then what a base coat looks like and i'm excited to see where this piece will go okay so what i have here is I have just two different shades of green and isn't it interesting to see how like green a lot and really with any color like the different shades of one color can really just run a, a gamut you know like a long range such diversity in one color family so these are both in the green color family but the, it's just such a diverse you know um, amount of different colors of shades and hues you can get out of one color family. So I'm coming in and these two colors, what I liked about these is that when kind of blended together and overlapping, they look really pretty. They produce um, just kind of a, a deep, I would say something similar to like a, a pond type green. And so something a little foresty and so this is starting off i'm just being subtle i'm building on top of my base coat and i know that i'm going to keep adding um, different shades of green i'm going to get a little richer a little more vibrant in the colors but right now i'm kind of feeling this piece out by putting these on and seeing um where i want it to lead to and it is i you know i use this analogy a lot but developing your layers of colors is kind of like developing your flavors when cooking something. You just add to it, you know, you mix it in, you add to it a little more, and it's developing all these beautiful, um, deep, rich layers that will peek through, which is really um, a, a great technique uh, for trying to achieve an old world type of style. And that's what I'm going for on this particular piece. So for this blending in and adding these layers, I'm just taking care to leave my brush kind of wet. Um, I don't want it to get too dry. This is just the exact opposite of dry brushing. I want everything richly kind of overlapping and blending in um and like i don't want super clear borders i want kind of cloudy smudged borders between the paint like i want them overlapping in a very uh, flowy type of way if that makes sense and so and then the gray underneath just gives it such a nice base and so i will tell you i'm using um a round goat hair brush and I get this at Hobby Lobby whenever I do this type of technique um, I find that the goat hair brush it's it's such a soft uh, it has such a soft bristle and so it's very gentle very feathery 
And whereas like a chip brush or a synthetic brushes, they have a much stiffer bristles and it's hard to, I think sometimes kind of use them very, you know, to much success in this type of technique. Um, I will say, and also like the softness of this goat hair brush, it absorbs and it like retains so much moisture uh, because it's a, a natural material. And so it helps the paint to go on a lot smoother. I'm going to speed up a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm coming through and after I've got it mostly blended, um, I'm coming back with my lighter shade of green. And these are custom colors that I mix together, um, really using um, some greens and grays to make these colors. And so um, I wish I could tell you the names, but I just mix them on the side. And so anyway, and this is a homemade chalk paint. And so that has latex with plaster of Paris and a little bit of water. And I'm to the point where when I make homemade chalk paint, I don't really like measure. I just shake in a little bit. And if I find it's a little too thick and I want the paint to go on lighter, I'll add a little bit more water and vice versa. If you find you get it um, a little too like runny, you can shake in a little more plaster of Paris or add a touch more paint just to get it to the consistency that you want. When I'm doing something not like this, but very like a rustic farmhouse, I like it a little thicker. But when I'm doing old world style, um, I usually like it a little bit thinner so, just so I can get all my layers blending in. And so I'm just going around and I added some highlights and we'll speed it up and kind of take you through a little more process because there's so much more to see and a little ways more to go on this. So with this step, I'm just introducing more greens, and it really is an experimentation um, part <laughs> of this makeover, really kind of seeing which greens, you know, this is like, to me, like an olive -y, um type of green, very vintage green, and so I'm like, what does this look like? And I know that if I'm not in love with this, that it will still be a real pretty layer underneath um, whatever turns out to be my more, my more primary top coats. Um, it'll have, eventually I end up going with something of a brighter, more emerald type of green, but this will have, that emerald green will be anchored down by having some of these darker, more vintage colors um, peeking through in different places and really giving it um, a nice uh, depth of drama and richness underneath um, some more vibrant colors. Now I'm introducing a like a medium sky blue um, just to again to add some more color under like as part of my layers and so um, if you, this was a custom mixed color, but if you like this color, one color that Valspar has, it's super similar to this, is called Lucy Blue. And I really like Lucy Blue. It's a nice medium um, sky blue type of color. It's just, it's good for a lot of French pieces for very like coastal cottage type pieces. And I also like to use this type of color when I'm layering on like greens, blues, grays, you know, in like that type of palette, bringing in this just very medium kind of soft sky color. It just really adds a, a bit of softness, a bit of interest. And I love blue, so I like adding blues to a lot of different pieces, even if they play a secondary role um, in the overall design. So here we have the blue blended in, and now for me comes the exciting part. I have a an old vinyl record. I actually have a whole box of them 
they're scratched up. They're not good for playing anymore. And so I like using them as paint palettes. I have some different colors, um, a couple of brighter greens, almost like a bright foresty green. I have a, a dark yellow. I also have like a turquoise type of blue, um, just a real oh, pretty, um, vibrant tropical blue. And so I have these together and I'm mixing them in and this is where it just gets really fun. So I have all these anchor base colors underneath and now we're coming, they'll be peeking through in different areas. The main thing that I'm doing in this part, and to me, the style that I am going for is really a an old world type of style where there's been layers of colors and some areas look like faded or some oxidation has taken place and a little bit of modeling and I don't want anything too uniform or consistent um, but something that looks really uh, kind of naturally aged and lovely and so and, and interesting full of character like I think what is beautiful or what is lovely or pretty to each of us could mean something different. And so for me, I love looking at something that has all types of layers of colors that does have a, I like that oxidized look. I like where you see um, a swatch of a color on a piece of furniture, but just below that, you know, through some not cracks or crackles, but through some spaces, you see other colors peeking through and it gives it such a neat antique and aged look. And so this is what I'm going for. And I tell you, I'm like for this green, like the more vibrant, brighter green, um, my inspiration for this, I really enjoy going back and looking at historical uh, French castles and European castles and French chateaus and and a lot of them you will and even older like European furniture and a lot of them you will see some really um, opulent colors like lots of jewel tones in their fabrics and their drapes uh, just some interesting um, hues coming through. And so I, that's where I have drawn a lot of my inspiration for these colors, uh, for the color scheme for this. It's just those old world, rich chateau jewel tones. You can see I'm kind of moving my little scooter thing, scooter cart around. It is just... Oh, if you guys don't have one of these and you work on furniture a lot, they are back savers. I will tell you that. Nothing like going completely off track in the middle of the conversation, is there? Going from talking about styles and jewel tones and where I got my inspiration to, like, oh, by the way, you should get a little roller cart. Uh, so funny. Um, that That's how my mind works. Easily distracted. Stay on track, Casey. So anyway, um, I hope that, you know, watching this come to be and showing like how these colors are blending together. I am doing a little bit of blending of these colors together just right on like I'm dabbing like half of my brush on the record on the blue part, half on the green part and then painting it together and, um, and applying it to the buffet and then so on. And then half in the green, half in the yellow or even kind of mix them together on a palette before I apply it. it just really it is like how you find what works for you. And, and I kind of find even that, um, you know, switching up just the method of doing it even provides a kind of a beautiful inconsistency. So the, I will say um, the challenge of this part, which the challenge that I face and pretty much do every time at this point is making sure that everything kind of blends in as much as possible in a more natural type of way. And so I think one of the biggest things you want to watch for and the biggest thing that I watch for is making sure there's not clear 
borders between each section of color, between each color. Like you don't want a dab of yellow here, right next to it, a dab of green, right next to that, a dab of a different shade of green. You want them a little bit overlapped. And I think that's when you kind of like dab at them, but then you start slowly pulling those colors um, and just gently like with, I say gently, but right here in this part of the video, I think I'm just kind of getting it on, like kind of stabbing it at it really. And so you want to like overlap your colors where it looks a little more um, modeled. Like I even kind of like it when there is like, it looks like a little bit of paint spilled and it bounced up and splattered onto the dresser. I like that type of look a little um, on some pieces, on some type of paint styles, not on everyone. But I think the main thing you want to avoid or you want to address as you're, if you're working on this old world type of style is making sure there's just no clear borders. So with that, you're trying to infuse it in. And when I say blend, like I am not going for perfectly blended all over to me that becomes very uniform and very consistent and i'm kind of as i begin adding some more yellow um, and some of the lighter colors i am realizing that this is helping me to get where i want to get so i took a risk and i went in with a really light cream color because i noticed those lighter colors were really making this pop it was like bringing out this kind of aged effect a little bit that made it look like under these dark colors there were these light colors peeking through but the funny thing is the lighter colors were on the top so that's what i'm working on right now at this part of the process I have found that when I am trying to incorporate some light colors that starting from like a a certain angle so like a bottom like a bottom corner or even like a top middle and working way down or a bottom or top corner and working way up or maybe an angle over a certain type of drawer is a good way to begin a pattern when you start doing adding lighter, much lighter colors to a much darker background. So at this point, I switched to a chip brush because it's a little stiffer than a goat hair brush. It doesn't absorb as much paint. So now I'm kind of dry brushing. Just have a dip it in a, my brush in a little bit of paint. And then it's very light. I offload most of it. And I'm just applying light amounts. So this, what this is going to do, it's going to help like blur some of those borders between the paint where it looks kind of modeled together. And so I'm just being very light. I'm lightening up some areas, kind of giving it, you know, that faded look. And to me, it's the way like if the dresser had sat in front, like with a window light shining on it over a long period of years, it would naturally become faded. And so that's what I'm doing here by just applying some light hues to it, really kind of dry brushing, rubbing it in and um, or applying it with just very uh, gentle strokes and really just um, just kind of toning things down a little bit, uh, kind of blurring all of those borders. And that's what's going on at this point. And we'll do that with a couple of different colors.
I had this oval on each side of the dresser and I decided just to paint a really simple floral design on this oval. I'm sorry that my arm is kind of in the way of this. Sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, how the camera is um, viewing things when you're in the middle of working on a project. So I'm just giving a little grass. Seriously, just a, a very simple, modest job. And all I did was do a few stems, just like some simple stems. And I'm going along each side of the stems um, just with some little red dots and it turned out oh i think just you know something very pastoral and not overly done and it fit in kind of well i like the little pop of red on the green as well So now I have some um, Dixie Bell gold gilding wax and I'm just coming and brushing that over um, just my hardware. And I did apply some red to some trim and just some of the protruding trim, the decorative trim around my ovals and at the top. And I ended up not loving that. So I'll go back and do some gold over that. And I don't want this to be, you know, to go on looking perfect and absolutely flawless because it's supposed to be you know the style is like an antique age piece so it's gonna um look a little aged and antiqued and you know rubbed off in some certain spots so on this gold on the trim i'm not looking for perfection just uh something that's been on there for many decades and it's just kind of faded and rubbed off over time You can apply this gilding wax with a brush, with a cloth, with your finger. Um, I'm rubbing it in in some different areas, just kind of go around um, off and on in the trim that goes around the doors. And you can see I even like got off of the trim a little bit and you just rub it in and um, on the dresser and it blends in with this old world style effect. So I really wasn't worried about like everything being absolutely flawless because an old world style finish is it's not a flawless finish that's part of you know it's so funny it's part of the the charm of old world is it it's imperfect it looks aged it looks you know it's kind of battle worn and it has lots of character and it is very far from pristine and so here we are at the finished product and I like the way that the green looks on this. Um, we will see how well it does. I have this piece up in my Etsy shop. And for some reason, like if it doesn't sell well, then I have some other things that I can do to it. But I love this emerald green. I love the jewel tones. I think it works really well for an old world European style or farmhouse or for somebody that likes a boho design, but I'd love seeing these deep layers of colors come through and then some lighter accents. And so anyway, it's a fun piece to have in my shop. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and that it's been helpful for you. I will say a lot of my, um, oh, my props, staging props, I'll pick them up at local thrift stores and local auctions is a good way to get staging props and there's some of the blue you see coming through so thank you for taking this journey with me to make over this old world emerald modeled green buffet slash dresser